Well, welcome back um, and welcome anew for those of you who are here for um, the lecture as your first event of the day. Many of us have been enjoying many festivities uh, starting this morning at a wonderful installation service. Uh, my name is Lisa DeBoer. I am currently chairing the art department and it's just such a joy to see all of you here with us today to listen to the conversation, to think new thoughts and learn new things a process which uh, started six months ago when uh, Judy arrived on our campus to take up her new position. So I will turn the microphone over now to Dr. Larson, who will um, talk to us about her vision for the 21st century here in the Adams Center for the Visual Arts. Lisa is a whole lot taller than I am. <laughs> um, well, thank you very much, all of you, for coming and for a really spectacular day. And again, my thanks to uh, Tony Askew for laying the groundwork to make all this possible. I have worked in large museums, medium museums, and small museums, and I find small museums to be a lot of hard work, um, but especially fun. So I am really looking forward to the challenges and the opportunities um, in front of me. A story ran in the Washington Post in 2007 that described a social experiment that the DC newspaper had conducted. Testing people's perceptions, tastes, and priorities, they engaged a world-class violinist, Joshua Bell, to play incognito in the metro station during a busy weekday rush hour. A handful of early morning passengers dropped dollar bills into his case and hurried on. Children seemed fascinated, but they were pulled on by busy parents. The question the Post asked, in a commonplace environment, at an uncommon hour, do we perceive beauty? Do we stop to appreciate it? It is a question we could also ask about the visual arts, for it is often through artists' eyes that we learn to open our own eyes with insights and clarity to beauty, as well as to suffering, injustice, and a full range of emotions. Art exhibits can help us with new ways of seeing that mirror our own experiences or unlock different perspectives on the world we share. Are we, as viewers, willing to open our eyes? Our mission at the Reynolds Gallery at Westmont College is exactly that, to present art that helps us open our eyes, helps us develop intellectual capacity, critical thinking skills, and avenues for self-discovery. The Reynolds Gallery this month is 23 years old, but in many ways, we are just getting started. Westmont College's strategic plan sets forth goals and commitments to build and maintain a strong arts program. Through the arts, Westmont seeks to clarify its distinctiveness, strengthen its reputation for quality programming, enhance its national profile, and build a strong operational infrastructure. We already have a lot of positives in, on our tally sheet, starting with leadership. Tony Askew served as founding director of the gallery and is to him we owe our thanks for giving us a foundation upon which to build. The arts have been an important priority for Westmont's trustees, starting with those who served under David Winter's leadership, continuing with Stan Gates, and currently rests with our trustees who work with President Gail Beebe. Early on, our good friends and patrons, Steve and Denise Adams, embraced a vision for the growing arts program when they funded the Adams Center for the Visual Arts. The potential for growing our audience is another huge strength. Our primary visitors come from our residential undergraduate population of 1,200 students, but our audience also includes our neighbors in Santa Barbara, home to a population of 92,000. When we add the contiguous urban areas of Goleta, Carpinteria, Montecito, and Summerland, we have a combined population of 200,000 who are well-educated and appreciative of cultural opportunities. Westmont College's commitment to developing all of its arts program and facilities is another strength. In the 1990s, Westmont launched a long-range plan to increase the profile for excellence in music, theater, and art. Westmont hired Dr. John Blondell as artistic director of the theater, and he brought an international perspective to theater, 
to Westmont and the Greater Santa Barbara Stages. In collaboration with Lit Moon Theatre Company, which he founded, Blondell has enriched theatrical offerings with cutting-edge performances. His World Shakespeare Festival in Santa Barbara is the first of its kind in the nation and only one of five in the world. In music, thanks to the generosity of Westmont's good friends, the Adams Chair in Music was established and Dr. Michael Schausberger was installed as its first holder. In the three years that he has been at Westmont, he has transformed the music program by securing grants and a special donor to make Westmont one of only two undergraduate colleges in California to become an all Steinway campus. Schausberger has led the department successfully to accreditation by the National Association of Schools of Music. Our visual arts program likewise has undergone significant growth. 23 years ago, the college formalized an art major and created an elegant 500 square foot gallery in a 1907 arts and craft bungalow building. Through Tony's energy and creativity, Westmont initiated quality gallery programming and enthusiastic patrons founded our Arts Council, a 38-member organization of appointed community leaders who support the art department and the gallery. They meet monthly during the academic year and serve as our advisors, volunteers, and ambassadors. Tony also initiated memberships in the gallery and launched a quarterly magazine titled Arts Ascent. Westmont can proudly boast that in the last five years, Professor Scott Anderson has won eight American Association of Museum Design Awards for our gallery's printed pieces, and three of those were first prizes. Tony also spearheaded the initiative to endow the chair for the um, art museum, um, and Westmont was most fortunate to receive leadership gifts from Darlene, Hans Darlene and Walter Hansen, Parker and Carolina Montgomery, Annette and Harold Simmons, and Denise and Steve Adams, as well as numerous other gifts of appreciation from a wide range of patrons and art enthusiasts who gave donations in appreciation for all that Tony has accomplished. It is indeed my distinct honor to be the first holder of the chair named in his honor, the R. Anthony Professor of Art History. In the last decade, Westmont raised funds for the new Adams Center for the Visual Art, scheduled to open fall 2011. Westmont will grow from a single gallery exhibition space to a fully professional art museum. The new building moves the art department from its lower campus location into the main core of campus. Again, I feel the potential for what we can achieve is huge. With heartfelt thanks to our generous patrons, Denise and Steve Adams, who both appreciate the value arts bring to a liberal arts education, we want to shape and define an arts institution with a sleek, modern, green building, a growing quality art collection, and a schedule of vibrant exhibitions and art programs. While our reputation among students, faculty, and the Santa Barbara commu cultural community is already good, we believe we can grow our audience through thoughtful consideration of how we manage and create access for the permanent collection, how we present innovative exhibitions, and how we promote a rich and diverse slate of arts programming for a full range of audiences. The Adams Center for the Visual Art is divided into two buildings. On the west will be a state-of-the-art studio space with classrooms, and to the east, our new art museum, with a gallery three times the size of our current Reynolds Gallery. Pfeiffer Architects in Los Angeles have designed museum space for the Adams Center using elongated horizontal lines with a modern style that merges with the natural landscape as it nestles into the existing berm. The contemporary design will increase visibility for Westmont's art program, arts programming and the gallery space will quadruple our current exhibition space. The Adams Center includes a well-appointed and here's some plans, a little hard to make out, but a well-appointed art storage vault, a print study room, a conference center, and on the other level, a 60-seat auditorium, as well as offices and workspaces. The new facility will include museum climate control systems that meet American Association of Museums' highest standards, and most importantly, the collection will be safely housed in one secure climate-controlled vault. Westmont will prudently use the next two and a half years to inventory our art collections, to write collections management documents as we organize the move into the Adams Center.